What's up you guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use individually addressable RGB strip lights so that you can do things like customizable signs or a lightsaber project or anything else where you want a lot of LEDs controllable from an Arduino or a microcontroller of any kind and you want customization over things like what color they display, a sequence of events that they fire in. I'm gonna show you how to do all of that in this video. Now the lightsaber is one kind of fun, kind of cool application, and I left this one pretty bare bones so it'd be kind of easy to see what's going on here, but you could totally package this into like some pretty simple plastic tubing and get like a pretty fun, basic DIY lightsaber build going. The actual meat and potatoes of this is just a little Arduino Nano and then a capacitive touch sensor, which basically operates like a push button. It's just a little bit more fun because it senses the presence of your finger rather than you actually depressing a button. Uh, and then the rest of this project is just a little bit of code, which I put on the Nano, and then a strip of these individually addressable LED lights. So you might have heard of these kind of as NeoPixels, but this specific chip or driver integrated circuit is a WS2812B. Any pin capable of doing pulse width modulation or PWM is capable of controlling a whole strip of these up to like 120 LEDs. Making awesome custom electronic components like this uh, homemade lightsaber or this 3D printed enclosure that can be a customizable LED sign has never been easier thanks to the sponsor of today's video PCB way and more about them later in the video now like I talked about in the beginning these could really not be any simpler they're a series of individually uh, addressable integrated circuits which do talk in a chain using pulse width modulation so basically as you send a signal down a chain of these strings you're telling it data rgb data and brightness data about the state of each individual led and you can control it in a sequence or a series by just one pulse width modulation pin so it has plugs for chaining the data outbound so you can send this to another strip of LEDs. Like I could plug this directly into this and I could control 128 LEDs rather than just 64 or any other number in customization. But then these bigger pieces also come with additional power uh, wires. So in this case, five volts in ground and rather than jumper them together, or tie them all into my breadboard, I just have these super convenient Wago uh, lever nuts where I can land multiple wires for jumpering purposes. It's basically like using a breadboard, but in midair. And then I use another one just to connect the signal wire off of the uh, individually addressable lights to the Arduino. But as you can see at the Arduino Nano, there is only ground five volts and then uh, digital pin three in use on the Nano, and then everything else is software based. So right now I just have a little script that just turns all the lights on and then has them snake in from the middle and then leave that one light on till I clear it out, as you can see. We're going to take a look from the very beginning at how to actually program these. We're gonna look at the software right now. All right, let's get started by uh, including the fastled.h library. So this is the um, library to control a string or grid. So really a grid is just a string of lights that are arranged in a square or rectangular pattern instead of in a linear pattern. But in terms of how they're wired together, it's still linear, it's still a string. Um, and this specifically works for the 2812B integrated circuits. I don't know for certain that it works with other uh, like NeoPixel style RGB drivers. So it might, I just haven't looked into it, but we want fastled.h. If you don't know how to uh, add libraries, you go to tools, you go to manage libraries, and then you should be able to do fastled.h. You're going to include fastled.h, and then I'm going to define the LED pin that I have it plugged into. And as you probably saw uh, in the intro, I have it plugged into pin three, but you can use any pin capable, can use any pin capable of PWM. So, so then another thing you're gonna wanna define in the beginning, and this will be specific to your application, is how many LEDs you're using. And then what I wanna do is I want to define C, R, G, B, and then LEDs, and then num. 
of LEDs. And what you'll see is we use this in just a second to set up some of the specific uh, context for using this specific kind of um, driver. So we'll go into our setup, our void setup loop, and we want fast LED dot add LEDs. So we're basically loading in the number of LEDs that we need. We say what uh, the circuit for them is. And in this case, we're using WS2812 uh, integrated circuits. And then the pin that we want it on. And in this case, we defined it as LED pin. And then the coloring scheme. So GRB, uh, which is just RGB. I'm honestly not sure why they inverted the letters like that. Don't worry about it too much. Um, and then what we want to say is uh, the LEDs to load in and then how many. So num LEDs. Then the next thing I like to do, because one thing to keep in mind is driving this many LEDs, even though, yes, the brains can handle it. Um, you're drawing a lot of amperage when you pull 64 LEDs all at the same time off of your little dinky Arduino. The Arduino can only supply like maybe two amps. Then something that you don't have to do, but because these are using like sort of simple PWM technology, it's not a bad idea to just clear and then show the LEDs in your setup loops. We're gonna uh, use fast LED dot show. And then just in case we wanna do any debugging, I'm gonna do serial begin 9600. And then I think what we'll do here as a first basic test to show you how to use, um, how to use this is we will just set um, one LED red, one LED to green and one LED to blue. So to do this, you don't need fast LED again. You actually now are just going to say LEDs and then the index that you want to set equal to a different color. So in my case, why don't I take LEDs zero and then CRGB is how you tell it that you're gonna pass it a new color. And then I'm gonna say 255 and then zero and then zero. So that should be all red. And now I'm just going to take a random one, LEDs 13, and I'm going to set that equal to CRGB 0, 255, 0. So that should give me a decent green. And then let's say LEDs 61, so not all the way to 64, but you'll get the idea, is going to be equal to CRGB 0, 0, 255. And now I'm not even gonna put anything in the loop code yet. The loop code is just gonna pass. But what I wanna do is compile it, verify it, and I wanna make sure that when this starts up, it's just going to turn on three LEDs. And actually, so that it looks kind of sequential, I think what I'll do is I'll put a one second delay in between turning on each of these uh, lights. And so here you're just seeing the most basic way you can take one light in that string and you can command it to any color that you want. Um, and I'm already realizing that I forgot something I just told you guys about, which is fast LED dot show. So we're going to update the uh, colors, but we have to actually say, okay, I updated the color now show it. All right. And let me get my other camera going so you can see what the lights are doing and we are going to hit upload. All right, so I still had the old code on there and now it's compiling red, green, blue. There you go. So uh, what you saw there, red one kicks on first, then green, then blue one second later. And if you remember the numbers we used, we used zero for red, so that's down here. And then what's actually happening here is it's snaking in this order. So this is zero through seven, this light is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 is where we got green. And then it's snaking back and forth. So it's uh, a continuous string. It just looks like a grid. And so we get to 61. And remember, we have 64 lights starting with 0. So 63 is right here. So let's go ahead and get rid of all of the defining LEDs to do things in the setup loop. And let's just settle for this setup loop, which is going to turn the thing on, set brightness to 70, and then clear and show the lights. And let's go down to void loop. And let's put something interesting in here to run repeatedly. Why don't we say, why don't we do a simple runner circuit? And we'll just say for uh, I less than and then the number of LEDs. So as long as our index variable is less than 64, why don't we just run through this circuit and turn them all on with a slight delay in between them? 
and of course I've caught myself in Python syntax world. So what we need to do is we need to say int i is equal to zero to start, and then we want i, and that's a semicolon, not a comma, and then we want i while it's less than the number of LEDs, and then what we want to happen each loop is i to add one. So it's just an incrementer variable. And then we open up curly brackets, and what I'll say in here is what I want is uh, just LEDs at i equal to, and you could make this a random color or a dynamic color, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a red and a green and no blue. It's not going to show unless we say fast LED dot show. And then it's going to all happen immediately back to back to back unless we also say delay some amount of time. And this is in milliseconds. So a 50 millisecond delay still means we'll do all of this in three seconds. And then, because currently this is going to give us a, a full board, we need something to go through and turn them back off. And to do that, we could clear, but we could also just write zeros to them and do it in the same order. Let's verify. And it does not compile, which is why you verify, because I forgot some semicolons, because C++ syntax is silly. Let's verify now. There we go. So let's upload it and let's see what we get on our board. Here goes, please. There we go. We're getting yellow, which is what red and green combine for. That's sweet. And then you get this runner behind it kind of turning them off, which is pretty fun. Um, so, and because it's in the loop section of our code, as soon as it finishes a cycle, it's going to restart immediately. So let's go back to the code and let's take a look at how to maybe take this one step further, right after it's yellow, then we'll do something that is purple, um, and then we'll turn them back off. And so all you're gonna see here, I copied the exact same code, but uh, rather, and then I'm gonna get rid of this middle one. What we'll have now is we'll have yellow fill the screen and then be chased by purple and then be cleared out. So that's just a simple example of how quickly you can iterate on these things. Let's just upload that quickly and see what that's changed and it resets real briefly and then yellow filling the screen here comes purple right behind it hopefully that shows up okay on the phone and then it gets cleared out Whoop. so that is some of the most basic conceptual code behind how you set LEDs, how you turn them on, how you turn them off. Hopefully this gave you what you were looking for. This was really meant to be a tutorial on how to use the WS2812 uh, integrated circuit, individually addressable LED strip with an Arduino microcontroller. Um, the possibilities are endless. These are super, super cool components and I have a ton of fun using them and programming them into to things like that lightsaber. And speaking of that lightsaber, it's a great time to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. PCBWay is one of the best resources for makers who are looking to take their hobby builds and turn them into professional grade, official, legit looking PCBs. With little to no electrical design experience, I was able to design a cool uh, Arduino Nano compatible 12 LED board that is able to take four capacitive touch sensors as inputs, control a servo, and a bank of 12 LEDs. They look awesome. Could not be more impressed with their quality, how easy it is to generate design files for custom electronics, and PCB tech support is super responsive, and their engineers and design team review every job that's submitted. On top of that, they have great support for 3D printing and metal prototyping as well. So they're an awesome one-stop shop for your maker needs to take your designs to the next level. So a huge thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and be sure to check their page out linked in the description below. I'll also leave a couple useful links to some of the components I used in this video, including the uh, cheap Arduino Nanos that I get, the capacitive touch sensors, and the string form and the eight by eight grid form of the uh, LEDs that I use in this video. So if you want the exact components that I show here, you can get them also linked in the description below. But keep in mind, WS2812 is the type of integrated circuit that we used in this video. And I used the Arduino Nano. 
Uh, they, there are other forms of individually addressable RGBs, and there are plenty of other forms of microcontroller, as well as Raspberry Pi and other standard ways of controlling these strip lights. So the world is your oyster. This should hopefully get you going. I really appreciate you guys watching the videos. I appreciate all of the continued support on LeMaster Tech. It's kind of crazy to think that we're going to crack 15,000 subscribers this year. Uh, month because since moving to Texas and having a baby and starting a new job, uh, I have not had the time for YouTube that I previously had and the channel has just continued to grow and the comments have kept pouring in for support. So I really want to get back on a consistent build schedule. Um, and so thank you everyone for watching the videos and continuing to support me and continuing to grow LeMaster Tech, even when LeMaster Tech is struggling to consistently produce videos. So thank you everyone for watching. Be sure to let me know what you'd like to see next on the channel. A huge thank you as always to my Patreon supporters and good luck with your projects. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.